Did you fix the tripping alarm? Oh, sh**. Uh, walk with a crust fund. Boom. Uh... Well, I guess we should start at the beginning. <laughs> um... All right, welcome to Crust Fund. Yeah. Hey, Dan. Hey, Tebow. What are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're doing here, man. Uh, we walk through a city place and find food to get inspired to cook food to show you. I don't know. <laughs> I couldn't have put it better myself. I don't know. You're. How easy it is to make dishes that might sound not easy to make. Cool. Would go walk around and like try food and then maybe find a dish that's inspirational, try to cook it. And then I wanted to make a fusion thing. We went to Jackson Heights looking for food that would be kind of approachable, utilitarian. I definitely started thinking I was gonna like do something like Indian maybe that was like kind of like a stew or something. So we ate our way through Jackson Heights where all yeah. the good food is. And we had more or less worked our way all the way down to what should we call it Plaza. What should we call it Plaza? The yeah. technical name for Corona Plaza. Corona was the word I could not <laughs> think of. Stopped at like 15 different things, sharing little bites along the way. And the other thing, well, I mean the fusion thing that we talked about. Yeah, where did that come from? So that was, we went to one of the places that was along the Momo crawl. But the, we had Momos. And Goat Momos and a fried egg. Yeah. <laughs> It was like F-R-I, it probably wasn't fry. We were probably oh, saying it wrong. Fried egg. I want this fried egg and he just brought us <laughs> a hard fried egg. We're like, that's not what we wanted. It looked like hard boiled eggs that were fried. That's what I thought we were gonna get. Having goat momos and naturally eating, I think a lot of Mexican food. We even had some lingua tacos. That's where it was. Yeah, cause we had the goat momo and we talked about trying to make momos, which you were like, they're just like dumplings. And then we found a little hole in the wall and I wanted to get a taco and they had lingua tacos. That was when the idea came to try to do fusion stuff instead of just trying to reinterpret a dish the same way that we ate it, I guess. I think that what we kind of settled on was like, yeah, we could do lingua as the meat. It kind of being taco inspired, but then also fitting with like an Asian style dumpling. That one was really simple. But it was surprising. I didn't think it would necessarily be good. I would eat that one again. The blood yeah. stew I would eat occasionally because we had yeah. about four pounds of leftovers that I ate for like a week and I wanted to die. But I threw away like half of what we ate. Oh or my God. Dude, there was so much. There was I would so eat. Much. You could turn that shit into a burrito. I just couldn't look at it anymore. It started to like kind of re-coagulate a little bit. Oh boy. It didn't really like. But the dumplings are still in my freezer. I'm going to save those. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to do these momos. So we had lingua tacos. What's lingua? Lingua means tongue. But we're not going to make tacos. We're going to make momos, which are spoiled or just dumplings. But we're gonna fill it with lingua. When we cook it, we would put like raw cabbage and radish in there, sliced up, and it would be kind of crunchy. Hopefully not overcooked lingua. <laughs> Do you think overcooked lingua would be tough or too soft? Kind of it... tough, but I feel like, you know, when you're cooking it in a pan, like with a dumpling that you're steaming, like I can see it just becoming like gooey and stuff. Could be kind of like a wet sock, gross. Like <laughs> chewy, <laughs> not just tough, but chewy, you know? Like, I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah, so we'll see. This has never been but done. But it'll be really simple. So it'll be kind of like lingua flavored ish but also have like the accompaniment of like something you would have on a taco. That's the idea, but in a steamed dumpling and it might fail. Yeah. Can you jungle? What are these? That's garlic. What is this one? Yes, yeah, start out boiling, blanching, whatever you want to call the tongue. Just for flavor in that boiling water, there's gonna be garlic, onions, bay leaf, and then I'm gonna add like a little bit of ginger because I thought that might change a little bit and make it a little bit more Momo-ish. If you've made like a gyoza type dumpling, like there's gonna be ginger, garlic, that kind of flavor, and tacos also, you know, lingua. When you cook it, we'll have a little bit of garlic and I don't think it's that crazy for there to be a ginger flavor. So that's kind of the idea. So I'll probably throw like a thumb of ginger in there while it's boiling and a little bit of that flavor. But once it cooks, you take out that really cool, sexy outer layer of the tongue, the skin, and we're gonna dice it up, saute it in the pan with, it's almost like you're using pasta water, like just like a couple spoonfuls of that water that it cooked in, get like a little bit of flavor, like kind of coated on the outside and then let that cool before you put it in. That's the idea, but we don't know what's gonna happen. It should be pretty simple inside, but then you can dunk it in sauce if you want to do that. It's pretty simple, so yeah, so we're just gonna Famous last words. chop up the, <laughs> we'll just rough chop the garlic and onion and add water, bay leaf, like I said. We'll note anything else if we add anything else to it. Uh, oh yeah, and ginger, and add that in there. Dan loves this tongue. It's a very pleasant slap. Try it. All right. It's kind of weird. Just let this go, man. 
probably cook for about 30 minutes as it boils. So the, the heat's already on, and it's just the water's heating up. What are we doing? This is done, so we think. So I'm gonna cut this janky bit off right here. This might be a little raw on the inside. Hey, look, it's definitely raw. It's like medium, medium rare. We want it to be more cooked, which we will be doing. Disgusting. We essentially pre-cooked it. Now we're going to cook it in the pan. Definitely a weird sensation here. Did you compare it to feeling your own tongue? No. It's like a weird foot. It's like Aladdin's, Aladdin's shoe. Do you know how to like butcher this thing? They said to peel it off. It's not coming, just coming off. I'm feeling like once it starts to come off, cooked it'll... enough? No, I think it is. It's just like. I think unfortunately I might have to like cut it off. You like an apple peeler? Under the skin actually it might. A pizza cutter. Look at attempt. These are the New York City tools I have. Oh, oh. oh okay. Kind of really weird. It's gonna take forever. I mean, you're only trying to get a little bit of meat out of it. We don't have to like get too you know, like do this portion of it. So, did you just get some tongue? Oh god. Slap. We should probably like watch a, a YouTube video about how to prepare a tongue. This part is the most important part. Right Honestly, it looks like veal. Yeah, it, it looks. It, I mean, this is veal, but I mean, it looks like we're cut, like, cutting into like a tenderloin. Once you got all the other stuff off, like if this wasn't there. second and then we're gonna add some of that liquid here. The liquid from where you cook the tongue in this pot here? Yeah, and then pretty much it'll be done. And it becomes the stuffing to the momo. And then that's, we use that's the idea. These, these wrappers. Which were, and then we should just be able to cook it in this pan. Huh? The very pan that we are cooking this tongue in. We can cook the dumplings in. Will it, will it brown? Will it brown? Don't try this at home, we're professionals. We are not professionals. Covered in pizza and cheese attire. Spoon me. Look at that old thing. Look at that old thing. <laughs> We're all gonna get lead poisoning now. Is that just like caramelize it or what's that do? I think we're gonna get a little caramelization going. Plus there's all the stuff that was to cook this in. So we got not only the beefy juices, onion and garlic and bay leaf and salt, pepper, other tongue. stuff. Tongue. Tongue, yeah, the <laughs> tongue was in there. So all that's gonna go back in there and just let it kind of high heat. Just reduce this a little bit and then should be good to start making the momo. Waited maybe a second. I don't want to like wilt this, but. Are we the first person to do this on the planet? I don't think we are. But my last, there's got to be some tongue dumpling somewhere. It's gonna work though. <laughs> it could have been maybe chops finer. Yeah. What if we threw this in the in my my ninja? A couple zips. You want to try like maybe half and half? Do half like this and then we half. Could do that. Yeah. We'll see what happens here. I'm not trying to paste it, just kind of make it a little bit finer. If you've made normal dumplings, if people usually use ground meat, that way it's like kind of spoonable. That doesn't look bad though. That looks more like... Like I want it to be chunky, but at the same time, like cause that's what lingua is like, but I think that actually, let me run this a little bit longer and then I'm gonna probably put the rest of it in there. I think it's gonna work. Because it's a dumpling fusion thing, I, I still figured test oil would be good. So yeah, I just want like a little bit of acid just because I feel like it'd be a little bit more than just tongue and, you know, whatever. So I, I, not just savory, I'd like it to be a little bit bright when you bite into it. Yeah, you know, if it was like an Asian cold salad or something, or uh, imagine we'll probably get about a dozen or so on here. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna take one of these and you got a little bowl of water here. Run your fingers around the edge. And you got a little spoon here. To pinch it here, a little bit more water because it's a little bit hard. It's gonna more or less fold. You're just pinching it and working all the way across the top of it. And you can already see mine are not perfect here. Boom, it's not pretty. I'd eat it, throw it in the it's pan. Not, but these won't really stick without water on the edge. We might have actually made a new food. <laughs> 
And really, if you want to make it look prim from proper, it's almost like you tuck it a little bit. A little and butt. Boom. Now it's got shape. So you can see like, this one's flat, just a little shape, boom. All right, we'll come back to a full plate. turned it. It almost looks like these are whole wheat wrappers. <sighs> oh. <sighs> it's like we're on a date. Here we are with Dan, having this romantic uh, dumpling date in his his trashed kitchen. <laughs> so this was your idea. I helped bring it to the, the field goal. So what we found, lingua tacos in Jackson Heights. We had goat momos. So I was like, why don't we just take them and, and, and just go put them together. So then you end up with tongue momo things. Conceptually, this works, so. I mean, yeah, they look right. So there she blows. Face for size, way smaller than the tongue we started with. You got the one chunk, piece of chunk in there. That's really good. And we also got our, our Japanese beers here, so. Yum. Yeah, all right, let me try this. Did this wrapper seem yeah. cooked enough? I think they could be a little crispier. Hmm. It definitely was good that we blended it. Good mouthfeel. I would say. Mouthfeel, did you really just say that? Yeah, mouth, like it's good mouthfeel. Even the veggies are crunchy. Tongue is good, it's tender, yeah. it's also not overcooked. Yeah, I, think I we thought just, it'd be kind of chewy. We made a successful food here, guys. Is this the beginning of the future of food? Next time we'll do crickets. Not the future. It's a little bit smoky. A little bit like barbecue, but again, I have like the ginger. I feel like it all works, because even like a lot of barbecue sauce, even like American barbecue sauces, they've got a little bit of ginger in there. So nothing is out of place, but just put it sort of in the right places for it to kind of seem like a it's like enough of combinations of things. I would call it a damn fine success. Yeah, I think that that's two successes here. No. Mm. Mm. Two thumbs up, two thumbs up. I really thought we'd have like a funny failure. <laughs> Pretty good actually. <laughs> As you can tell. Everything that already was said about these, but yeah. they're just crispier. Just we just put them back in yeah. for longer. Which I like. That's how I usually make them. I mean, I like them crispy. I was just making it more steamy. I think it's better crispy, but at the same time, I think we overcooked the tongue now. The bit. inside? Is it yeah. Like, yeah. Any final thoughts before we conclude this? Not really, man. I'm burning Massive out. <laughs> Some time. We did, a lot of, we did a lot of good food, man. As you can see, it's fucking dark outside yeah, now. Yeah, it, it started off at like noon. We started like noon cooking. We set up at noon, started cooking at one, right? There was some hangout and chilling between. For cooking essentially two dishes that we've never cooked before, I think it turned out fine. No, I would definitely eat both of these again. Like, I, I thought both of them would be like, oh, that was fun. The leftover first dish, and then these that I'll freeze, like, I'm, I'm gonna enjoy eating again. So, much success. Success. Two, two thumbs up and a high five. Uh, All right. Until next time, when you come back to New York City and we eat ourselves silly again and try something else. Yeah. Is that the goal? Let's do it. Let's do it. Bye. Bye bye. So thanks, y'all, for coming on this adventure where we we got food drunk, not alcohol drunk. No, Definitely, yeah. there's no alcohol involved in this process. Not really that much, actually. Okay. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, if you guys, well, we kind of bored, yeah, there you go. If you guys have recommendations for places that we should eat, because we are gonna do more videos like this, more videos where, uh, you know, we're together walking around and then cooking in Dan's apartment. If you have recommendations, let us know. You know, we're looking for food that, you know, kind of like staple dishes. So maybe if there's something interesting like that that we should try, there's not really any parameters. It's really just like, we wanna try stuff and show that like, essentially two schlubs with basic cooking knowledge. In a very tiny space. Can, yeah, it makes, all, all of the challenges. Can make something edible. Yeah, you don't really need that a lot. That was good. There will be failures <clears throat> or lackluster dishes. These weren't failures. I think these no. turned out pretty well. Like, I think most of the time you just try something new. It's gonna be satisfying probably because your heart went. There's the joy of, of you made the effort. Yeah. And in this case, I don't think we, we didn't bite off more than we could chew, but these are all, these get were it, both. Get it, tongue, get it, tongue. Uh. <laughs> the mouth feel. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kissing dumplings, yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> recommendations, puns. Yeah, if you have fusion ideas of things that could go together, but maybe traditionally don't go together, nothing too crazy left and right feel, like chocolate pizza or something, you know, we don't want that. Things that, you know, you're like, hmm, what if you what put if? this on that, or this in that? or this with that. Thanks, y'all. 
We'll see you next time when we go to this other place and eat this thing. We'll go here. We might go there. What about here? Let us know in the comments Wait. where we should, there. That, not there. Right, zoom in, enhance. Holy shit. Bye. <laughs> Look, yeah. there's a cat outside. Not our cat. <laughs> <laughs>